Agriculture and food production is a balancing act. Protecting crops with pesticides has proven problematic over the decades. California-based biotech Provivi is promising safer, more affordable and sustainable crop protection for farmers around the world using pheromones, a natural technology that targets specific species, harmlessly disrupting reproduction and keeping numbers low. I'm Andrew Wilson in Davos from where I spoke to co-founder Pedro Cuellu in the US. Pedro, thanks for joining us. We know there's an insect problem. We hear about bees and other pollinators. Sometimes we notice it ourselves, but how serious is that problem? People estimate that insect populations have declined by about uh, 80% in the last 30, 40 years. There are several papers on this and reports coming out of Germany, California, Costa Rica. Um, it is a big problem because insects are at the bottom of the food chain. Birds rely on insects, fish rely on insects, and insects also provide a range of ecological services back to us that today we receive for free, like pollination, um, organic matter decomposition, and even the predation of pests in agriculture, right, where you have, for example, ladybugs eating up other uh, deleterious pests and therefore helping farmers. Pheromones reduce or even remove the needs for pesticides, is that correct? Pheromones are the basis of the oldest language in the world. Um, that's how animals have been communicating with other animals uh, for millions of years. So if you think of um, ants and bees, these social insects, right, all of that is organized by messages that are sent via pheromones. Now in our case, what we do is we work with sex pheromones, uh, in particular the sex pheromones of moths. And so the caterpillar grows up, becomes a moth, and then uh, she will emit a little bit of pheromone to call a male that can be miles away. The male can pick up that scent with his antenna, fly towards the female, and then they mate and reproduce. If, however, you put pheromone in an entire farm, then the, the male moth gets confused. He can no longer uh, find a female. They don't meet up, they don't mate, and you can have a control of the pest population without having to use the pesticide. And the beauty of that is that it is very species specific because every insect has a different pheromone, so you can therefore protect biodiversity. It is absolutely non-toxic, so it doesn't even kill the pest itself. And it is, it is preventative, so it works so that the population of the pest does not build up over time. And they're used successfully already, so why so long for the larger crop applications after so many years of fruit and vineyards reaping benefits for some time now? Well, that's the key question that we asked about eight years ago, right? So pheromones have all these beautiful attributes that have been described in the literature, but the question that we asked was, okay, if it is so perfect, why isn't everyone using them? And the answers that we kept getting were uh, the following two answers. Well, because they're too expensive and difficult to produce, and because they're also difficult to formulate and apply. They are like a perfume, like, like a fragrance, right? And so you have to find a way where you control the release of the pheromone in the field over time. So at Previvi, we have been systematically developing technologies that have now enabled us to launch uh, pheromone products in the biggest markets of agriculture. The staple crops of rice, corn, soy, cotton, that really feed and clothe the world. And by doing that, right, we can take what was otherwise a very elegant but niche solution to now really the mainstream of agriculture. So you're taking this to farmers in Mexico, Brazil, and soon Kenya and Indonesia. Are they enthusiastic? Because farmers can be resistant. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And in fact, we just launched in Indonesia. So now uh, the feedback that we're getting from the farmers is really uh, brilliant because they um, see with their own eyes and what it is like, right, to be able to farm without insecticides. I mean, there is, there is this one farmer last year who posted on Twitter a video of him walking into his field and then seeing a huge colony of ladybugs flourish. And then he talks about the ladybugs as his soldiers that are there working for him, right? And so I think establishing this, this reconnection of the farmer with nature and getting the farmer right, to be able to, to, to see what it is like, right, to, to, to benefit from nature in that way is really something that is super important in our mission. 
And when you think in terms of the value proposition, right, the economic value proposition from Provivi to the farmer, it's a combination of cost savings by reducing the use of insecticides, as well as um, an increase in revenues for the grower because you can protect yields. So there is less grain going to the mouth of the caterpillars and more grain that is then be able to be saleable to the market. And also grain at a higher quality, right? Because um, with less insect damage, you can have a grain that is, that is worth more. Talk me through the process. What service does Provivi actually provide? Yeah, so we have been thinking about it holistically, right? So that we don't just sell the, the physical product, but we sell more like a seasonal subscription uh, in dollars per hectare per season. That includes not only our product, but also the installation of the product and also the monitoring. So the data gathering throughout the season that will tell the farmer how well our product is performing and whether or not other interventions are needed or whether other application of other products are needed. And this is really important because this has long been recognized as the ideal way of managing pests in what is called integrated pest management. But to do that, you need two things. You need prevention, which is what we do with the mating disruption enabled by the pheromones, but also the, the monitoring, which is what we're doing as well as part of the service by getting the data every week in the field and relaying that to the farmer. And what sort of feedback are you getting, even anecdotally? Oh, in, in Mexico, where we now have been doing this uh, since late 2020, uh, farmers really appreciate the service component. Um, they are not used to it. Um, and it is a novel way of thinking about crop protection because usually they buy the, the insecticides or the fungicides and they go off a label, but there is very little uh, assistance that, that comes with it in terms of real-time assistance. And in our case, we thought it was very important to do this because we're launching not just a new product, but a new practice, right? That's what Revivi is about. It's about this pivot from remediation, where you wait for the bug to show up and then you kill it, to prevention, where you control the growth of the population from the beginning. And so the other key thing that we do is that the product and the service is deployed at the very beginning of the season, right after planting. And so in that sense, we want to occupy that space of mind in the grower that pheromones should be just as important as seeds and fertilizers, right, as an, as an essential component of farming. Is this the beginning of the end of insecticides? In fact, is your view that this is the future of food production? Yes, I think uh, pesticides will continue to be uh, needed for quite some time, but as um, someone that is looking at the future of this with the eyes of um, biology, right? And what can we do to reduce that dependence on uh, chemical pesticides? I think pheromones are ideally positioned, right? To become the foundation. And by that, I mean the first line of attack. So it should be the first thing that farmers do. And then in some cases that will be enough and you move on throughout the season without having to use any additional products, be them chemical or biological. But in other cases, the farmer will still need to uh, apply complementary products, right? And then there is the existing chemical pesticides that are available today, but then there are many other solutions being developed that are more biological in nature that could also um, allow the farmer to arrive at the end of the season with a very good uh, footprint in terms of sustainability. When we look at the change of science on soil use, on insecticides, on the role of nature, are you optimistic? Do you think we're approaching an agricultural revolution? Well, agricultural revolution, uh, revolutions right, have come in phases, right? So we had uh, tractors and mechanization. Then we had uh, chemistry itself right after World War II. And then we had biotechnology right, with uh, genetically modified uh, traits. Now, in the 21st century, right, what we are seeing is this emergence of those latest and greatest of um, biological techniques like uh, synthetic biology and that intersecting with agriculture, right? So in our case, what we're doing is we are um, learning how the insects themselves make pheromones, right? And then copying that and, and, and reproducing that in a way that can get the solution to, to scale to, to millions of farmers. And so like Provivi, there are many other companies uh, seeing an opportunity at that intersection. And I think um, it, it's a very exciting time to be doing this. Pedro, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Andrew.